Yo YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy Salvation Delete. We are back with another video, guys. And man, finally, finally talking about CWO Vegas, man. It's like what been two months since the game came out, basically. And we are now just basically a week away from CWO Vegas. But I'm heading out there next Thursday for the tourney. It's gonna be a good time. As most of you know, I work for MLG well, I'm referee, and so I'm excited to go out. I've never been to Vegas, so you know, who knows what'll happen. But Nah, I'm not for real though. It feels like it's been forever since I've made a YouTube video because I've only made one video in like 14-ish days because I was gone for Thanksgiving and working this week and everything. So I'm glad to finally be back. It's been too long. But with that said, guys, let's hop right into the video because we got a lot to talk about. Man, there's been a lot that we missed, a lot of 2Ks going on. So let's pop me in the top right corner, baby. What? Yo, what? Come on. Come on. Oh, we made it. Oh, man, that was a tough ride to get up here in the top right corner. Some of you were probably thinking, Man, that's cringy, man. That's cringy. <laughs> yeah, I know. It is. You just got to embrace it sometimes. It is what it is, okay? Everyone's kind of wondering, you know, what is this going to look like? What's this tournament going to look like? How's it going to work? 5v5. There's so many moving parts. There's been, you know, all these online tournaments. Optics looked great. You know, and a handful of teams have looked really good online. So it's going to be really exciting to see what these teams can do in land, in person, with the crowds in Vegas, man. It's going to be awesome. And I cannot wait for it. It's going to be an exciting time. First of all, I think we need to talk about the actual format of the tournament. Because there's a lot of changes this year with how it's going to work. And this tournament is actually going to be more similar than tournaments in the future. So when it comes to pool play, here is what the pool play drawings were. They're right here. Bang, on the screen. As you guys can see in pool A, we got 100 Thieves. We got EU. We got Reciprocity. And then in pool B, we got Luminosity, Red Reserve, uh, Evil Geniuses. Pool C's got Face Clan, Envy. Uh, team MC and then pool these got spliced up to gaming and G2 esports So I was a little bit disappointed with the drives. I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest It was it wasn't as great as I was hoping for I was hoping to either see optic with LG EU or 100 thieves But we really didn't get any of those storylines um, So for the most part there aren't that many exciting things to talk about when it comes to pool play right off the rip like I guess story like when it comes to storylines, I guess because uh you know, it, the teams, we just didn't get the exciting draws. I mean, the, obviously, the best matchups are going to be 100 Thieves and EU and probably FaZe Clan and Envy, which would be really interesting and exciting. Um, but besides that, there isn't too many exciting things. Again, I think everybody was looking forward to that Luminosity, uh, EG, and Red Reserve bracket, which is pretty tough off the rip for all three of those teams. And right now, that's probably the toughest group, I'd say. It depends what you think of Evil Geniuses, obviously. It's... It's the, I think the toughest group is either Pool A or Pool B. Maybe because of the top heaviness of 100 Thieves and EU. I probably would say Pool A is the group of death. But it's going to be interesting because, again, how this works is there's five teams in each pool. But this is the only tournament this season that will have five teams in each pool. So, so from here on out, the open bracket teams will not be in the pool play. And they'll only be able to play on the championship Sunday coming from the loser's bracket and in the loser's bracket in the championship bracket, if that makes sense. They'll never be in pools play again. So this is an extremely important tournament for all of the lower tier teams because you really need to make pool play to help secure your pro points for this event, which helps set you up, obviously, for the future based off pro points and all that. So, yeah, these teams have a lot to play for in this one. And that's why it's so interesting for a lot of these um, smaller teams. So obviously, this tournament was seeded off World War II pro points, basically. Um, and you were guaranteed to get in if you had three players stay on your team or stay together from World War II Season 2. So, again, these are the teams that made it in, these 12 teams. And then we'll have two teams in each pool that will be brought in as the week goes along. So next week, we got the qualification tournament, which is also pretty interesting. There's eight teams in the qualification tournament, which is this picture right here. This is the bracket for it. We've got Theory's team, Nevo's team, TM, Gone Gaming, Imperial, UIU, MF, which is Mind Freak, and Mox's team. So I'll talk more about the actual pool play here in a second, but let's go through this real quick because some of these teams could make some noise um, coming from this qualification bracket. And even think back to last year, Echo Fox and FaZe were in the open bracket at Dallas, the first event of last year, which is, I mean, pretty insane that two really solid teams year long were in the open bracket right at the beginning of the year. So there's a lot of moving parts this season. And there's guys that could break out at the beginning of this year, and we really don't know which guys are going to be those breakout studs this season. So far, some of the teams that have shown the best in the 2Ks and playing online, I mean, obviously the most obvious one is Space Lee's team, which I think they're going by Team NASA now, which is, you know, okay. I'm okay with that, whatever. But the Team NASA is Space Lee, Nagafin, Mox, Major Maniac, and Havoc, which really good team. 
and they've been playing fantastic in the 2Ks. They won a 2K and they've, they've been really close to winning multiple 2Ks. They're actually the team leader in pro points right now, which is, you know, doesn't mean much right now because a lot of teams haven't even been playing like all that much. But for what for whatever that means, they've been playing really well online. They played well in the 2Ks. So I think these guys have a lot to play for. And I would say in my mind, they're the favorite in this qualification tournament to make it out four of the eight teams make it into the pool play and the other four go play in the open bracket so the chances are pretty decent for you to make it out and uh the, the seeding doesn't really make too much of a difference at the end of the day just because you're gonna be playing in pool play i would say the next most likely to look for you gotta look for parasites team with theory uh pander lace fielding god rx that's a solid team as well um obviously they they a lot of those guys have been along, around for a long time they know what they're doing and uh you know i trust them to be pretty solid moving forward i don't know how how they're going to play like this on land together but i'm pretty confident that they should move on and then it comes down to some of these uh foreign teams you know teams like mind freak imperial tainted minds i mean gone game has got guys from four different countries on their team so the language barrier there and things like that they got two french dudes uh malls and xerox so it's going to be interesting to see how those guys uh mixed in gel together considering that their roster was a lot different last year obviously i would say that out of the european teams i'd expect at least one of the australian teams either mind freak or tainted minds to move forward if i had to to guess i would say tainted minds is a little bit better than mind freak right now but i think they're probably both really close and i would expect some pretty close matches between them um if they meet up the two teams that could make the most noise coming from the play-ins here would be again nagafin and space Leafs team and theory and parasites team i don't see any type of echo fox or phase situation with these guys but you know you never know with the, with this type of performance so um yeah just look out for those guys so when it comes to the pool play teams man there's there's a handful of teams that are going to be really good that i have a lot of confidence in going forward and i think the two that i have the most confidence in are optic which i think everybody has confidence in at this point and e united which i just really like that roster a lot they've got a lot of potential and i wouldn't be surprised if they win the tournament at all i mean they absolutely could take home the championship this this time around and i don't know how i feel about 100 thieves at this point kenny still looks like a god the roster is full of talent and again it's so tough to say with black ops 4 at this point because of just the metas and how it's played so far where the world war ii studs haven't all looked as great as you maybe would have hoped they would and we're seeing some of the infinite warfare and black ops 3 guys come back and be really good again so i'm not sure what to expect at this point and it might just come go back to the median of where guys in black ops 3 and infinite warfare really did enjoy playing the game so they put a lot of time into it then in world war 2 a lot of those guys just didn't enjoy it as much because it was a little bit too slow paced for them guys like scump and just a lot of the faster paced players that just didn't play as well in world war 2 but now they're back. Maybe a guy like Nagafin, who basically didn't even play at all in World War II. And now he's back and he's playing really well. There's so many things that could happen in this tournament, which is why the first event of the year is so fun all the time. And I can't talk too much on each individual team or player right now because we just haven't seen enough of them in real tournaments to get a good grasp of how successful they can be or will be. After Vegas, we're going to do a huge review and breakdown of a lot of the players' performances and going into, you know, the surprise and all that type of stuff, which will be really fun. I'm looking forward to that one. Here's a few of the sleepers that I definitely think are being a little bit overlooked right now. I really do believe in Space League's team, Team NASA. I think they could make a run here at Vegas. And if they make pools, which I expect them to, I wouldn't be surprised if they say if they end up in either Pool C or Pool D, they'd actually have a chance to get out of the bracket in one of those spots so especially in pool d i don't think too highly of splice right now it's hard to say again because we just don't know how these international rosters are going to work they have a chance to get out of there if they get one of those types of pools and make some plays and i just don't doubt them at all against any of the best teams so another team that i think people are kind of sleeping on is envy because i mean come on man they were just the world champions i know i was just talking about how world war ii might not mean as much or whatever but I believe in all those guys' talent. Envy could absolutely make a run here at the event. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me literally at all if they end up in the top four. And that's kind of how it goes for almost any of the top teams right now. The team that I'm most worried about going into this tournament is probably LG. They, they just haven't shown they, that they can really be an elite team yet on this game. And, like, I just haven't seen it from them when they're playing their scrims or playing 
in the 2Ks. Maybe you guys think differently, but at least for me, I just haven't seen that that it factor from L. I just haven't seen that it factor from LG yet to make me really believe that they could be a really good team. And the other team, and the other team that I think is being slept on like real hard is uh, Team Reciprocity because most of that team was the Unilad team from last year that had some pretty big runs in tournaments. And I think they're all out of really solid players. I mean, that roster is Wuskin, Tommy, Zed, Shawnee, and Denz. And I mean, I 100% believe that they could make a run at this tournament. And I 100% believe that they could finish top six, maybe even top four if things fall their way. But I'm going to go off. I'm going to make some power rankings for this tournament right now. Okay, number one, 100% is Optic Gaming. I don't think there's too much to explain there. They've been the most dominant team so far when, they, when they're trying to be. And... I believe in every single guy in that roster to be an elite player. Number two, I honestly believe is United. I think some people might disagree on that one, but um, I just think that overall, the talent and experience that United has is unmatched with their leadership with J-Cap and Clay, and just the young talent they have with Assault and BZ and, and all those guys. So EU is definitely my second. It's a tough one. This is actually really tough. I'm going to give it to 100 Thieves by a slight margin over Envy, but I, th they're very similar to me right now. I think I would just lean 100 Thieves because of the individual talent that I know they all have. Um, but I just, again, they have, they've just been making a lot of mistakes here so far, especially in the 2Ks, where I just haven't seen exactly what I wanted to see from 100 Thieves right now. Then next again is Envy, just the experience that they have and the talent that, that again, that they have individually. They all deserve to be near the top, and th these teams all have a shot to win this tournament if they, you know, catch fire and get hot. Next, I would say is FaZe Clan. I haven't really seen enough of them yet to have a true opinion on them, and that maybe that's probably why they're kind of in the middle of the rankings for me, but um, I'm, that's one of the teams I'm really going to be watching closely at Vegas to see how they perform and see how they mesh together and play in this type of game in the land environment. Probably next for me would be Red Reserve and then Splice. Overall... I would say, I mean, Optic Gaming should be the heavy favorites. EU second, and then probably Envy and 100 Thieves third and fourth. Uh, there's probably about eight teams that I see that could potentially win this tournament, and a lot of teams that could finish top two. Overall, guys, I didn't get too specific into, like, strengths and weaknesses of teams just because we haven't seen enough of the teams to have true opinions on most of these guys, and I don't want to make those judgments too early before the season's even started. So... With that said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, we're going to do a really in-depth look at CWL Vegas after the tournament and look at stats and look at performances and break down the, the, some of the film. Obviously, learn from the pros, a lot of stuff like that after this tournament. And with ranked play coming out soon, hopefully the competitive you know, vibes and excitement will you know, be back in the air. It feels like the, the, the energy's kind of been gone the last few weeks and this kind of snuck up on us, I think. So hopefully it gets good viewership. The turnout's good. I'm looking forward to it, as I said like a thousand times in this video already. But with that said, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, here, and subscribe if you did. I really do appreciate all the support. But as always, guys, I'm your boy, Sub and we'll see you next time. I'm out. Front, probably front, around the back, yeah. probably around the back. Front, 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 front. John's window dead. Front door, front door, front door. Nice. Karma spawns up. He originally is like, okay, I'm gonna control mid, but then he realizes, oh wait.